Let's have a listen to Dan Hannan's pitch to undecided voters for why they should vote to leave. Hello, I'm Daniel Hannan, Conservative Member of the European Parliament, and I'm inviting you to fire me on the 23rd of June for five reasons. First, because leaving is the modern choice. The European Union is a relic of the 1950s, a leftover from an era when regional blocs looked like the future. But that world has been overtaken by technological change. Second, because it's the cheaper choice. Instead of handing Brussels 20 billion pounds a year, gross 10 billion net, we'll have our money to spend on our priorities. Third, it's the democratic choice. We will take back the sublime right to hire and fire our own lawmakers. Fourth, it's the safer choice. In a necessarily uncertain world, we will have taken back control to mitigate any risks ourselves instead of passing power to people who may not have our interests at heart. And fifth, because it's the confident choice. We are a merchant, maritime, global nation. The fifth largest economy on the planet, the fourth military power, one of five permanent seat holders on the UN Security Council. We have the world's most widely studied language, the world's greatest city. How much bigger do we have to be before we're able to run our own affairs in our own interests, trading and cooperating with friends and allies on every continent, including Europe, but living under our own laws. That was Dan Hannan. Here he is with Emma Reynolds. Just to explain the rules, Emma has just five minutes to interrogate Dan, so she'll know what it's like for me. Emma can only ask questions. Dan can only give answers. Emma, your time starts now. Um, Daniel, uh, nine out of ten economists and a string of organisations have said that leaving the EU would damage the economy, uh, would make families worse off and could cause a recession. Could you name an independent economic forecast that has said the opposite, that somehow leaving would be mm. a benefit to the economy? Well, five former chancellors are campaigning to leave. There are plenty of economists who have argued that we should leave. Gerard Lyons, Andrew Lillico, Tim Conn. On that point, Gerard Lyons has said that, um, although he's in favour of leaving the EU, uh, whence, if we were to vote to leave, for two years it would cause great uncertainty and that it would depress the economy. Do you agree with no, him? he hasn't said that. I'm sorry, that's ridiculous. He said that in a report. No, he hasn't. No, he, he hasn't. Has I've appeared that. on numerous uh, platforms. You're going to have to do a bit better than that. Well, no, no. He's, he's well, strongly of the view that leaving means walking away from a declining trade bloc and being able and he has to also link said up that it with would countries cause two years of uncertainty and depressing all the economy. These people, all these international Pat, Patrick bodies, Minford, let's take all Patrick these, Minford. All these, hang on, you, he's your guy, not my but All of these international bodies that you're quoting, the IMF Patrick and Minford's your guy. These are uh, people who share the outlook. International bureaucrats like international bureaucracies. And they share the lifestyle, the tax-free, Michelin-starred, gourmandizing lifestyle, and they share the basic outlook. And they, they were pro-Euro, they were pro-ERM, because that's the kind of circles the, that they live the in. The Independent uh, Institute of Fiscal Studies does not share that lifestyle and is widely respected across the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. They have said that by leaving, we could blow a black hole of 20, between 20 billion and 40 billion pounds in our public finances, meaning less money for, the, for public services like the NHS. What do you say to that? Well, they were feeding in the same basic data that they got from all these IMF, OECD type They're an independent organisation. Emma, if I didn't think that we would be better off as a whole, I would not be inviting viewers to make me redundant from a very well remunerated job with huge tax free salaries. The reason that I'm confident that I will have a job in the private sector doing something a bit more productive than regulating everyone else after Brexit is because we shouldn't be linked to the world's only collapsing trade bloc. And in the medium term, there are huge opportunities for us. The Eurozone in the and the EU economy as a whole is growing, so I think that that Over statement is incorrect. Over the last 10 years, incorrect. it's the only one that um, hasn't grown. Let me uh, ask you uh, another question. Um, you have described the NHS as a, the, the biggest 60-year mistake. Why, therefore, can the public trust leave campaigners when they hmm. don't even want the NHS to be in public hands? Hmm. Well, I, I said that the mistake was having a completely nationalised system rather than a pluralist one, such as they have in almost every industrialised country. But, I mean, the, the referendum is an instruction to the government to get us out. Voting leave does not mean that you're electing the vote leave campaign. It means that you're giving the government a mandate to get us out on terms and within a timescale that is fair to our friends and allies across the channel, 
but in our interests. And so, in a way, all of these questions about, you know, where does Boris stand on farming subsidies or whatever are irrelevant because we're really looking at a decision to leave. And we're asking people not to trust any other politician, but to trust the British electorate. That's what this is about. But the weight of economic uh, evidence and, and forecast is on the Remain side. I think you would admit that at least. No. Um, can you name a country that has access to the single market but does not accept free movement? Oh, loads. I mean, the EU just signed free trade agreements with Peru, hold on, hold with on. Colombia. There's a difference with... between a free trade agreement and the single market. Yeah, you said access to the single market. Yes, yes. but ac every country in Europe has market. access to the single market. Yes. <clears throat> there is a free trade area from non-EU Iceland to non-EU Turkey. They all have does access Ireland, so without tariffs. Why therefore does Ireland and Norway face agricultural uh, tariffs of over 13%? Sorry, uh, Ireland and Norway? No, no. Iceland, oh, and Norway yes. Iceland and Norway face agricultural yes. tariffs. Iceland and Norway have very wisely chosen to stay out of the common agricultural policy. So that their policy. farmers face we those are, sorts of tariffs? Uh, well, yeah, and their farmers are well, strongly in favour of staying out of the CAP. And if we did the same thing, we, instead of being doubly penalised as a net food importer with efficient farms, we're paying more into the CAP than anyone else, we're getting less out of it than anyone else, we could have a British farming you, policy tailored to suit the needs you, of our own you farmers, were recently, and it would benefit our consumers You were recently in well. Northern Ireland, and you suggested that if we... Uh, leave the EU, that the border would remain open between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And, and it would. Right, OK. So how, therefore, can you guarantee that if you want to stop free movement, that European migrants wouldn't come through that border? Mm. Well... I You're mean, leaving the back door open, aren't you? Illegal migrants could come through that border today, but don't. We have had a common but travel area... they could come through area. legally, we, because yeah, they wouldn't have to be We've had a common travel area, border. which includes the UK and Ireland, which are in the EU. It also includes the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands, which are not in the EU. But it, it wouldn't be stopping free movement, it? That's my point. But the point is, it's possible now... I mean, don't take anyone's word for this. As a matter of observable fact, we have a common travel area now with EU and non-EU states. No one, either in Dublin or Westminster, is suggesting well, that that should... Given well, that all right, we're going, I'm going to stop you there, because we've only three seconds to go. Be okay. tough on time, in interest of fairness. It's now the turn of Emma to be cross-examined. First, though, let's have a look at her pitch to undecided voters for why they should vote to remain. We are stronger, safer and better off in Europe. Families benefit from lower prices, more jobs and greater financial security. Businesses benefit from a European single market of over 500 million people. Workers benefit from employment protection. We trade more with the EU than any other country. We attract inward investment from companies like Jaguar Land Rover here in the West Midlands. And by staying in the EU, we'll attract even more investment and create more jobs for the next generation. In the 21st century, the challenges that our country face no longer stop at the White Cliffs of Dover. Cross-border crime and terrorism, climate change. By working with our European partners, we can meet these challenges successfully. Every independent economic forecast predicts that damage will be done to our economy if we leave. And the Bank of England governor, Mark Carney, has talked of a potential recession. It would make families worse off. It would create a black hole in our public finances, meaning less money for our public services, like schools and the NHS. It's simply not a risk worth taking. Vote to remain on the 23rd of June for more jobs, prosperity and security. Is Emma Reynolds. Dan, you have five minutes to question Emma. Off Thank you go. You. Well, Emma, as you know, the, the EU is not a settled dispensation. It's undergoing the Euro crisis, the Schengen crisis, the migration problems, and it's evolving. What would you say are the greatest risks of remaining? Well, you would keep your job, Dan, um, which you that's seem to the, want you to lose. That's the only risk. You no, you seem to want to lose your job. Um, I don't think that there are uh, great lists, risks of us remaining because uh -huh. I think we have the best of both worlds. We are not in the Eurozone. We have the pound as our currency, like other eight other member states retain their own currency as well. But we have unfettered access to the single market. Mm. And there's no other country okay, around the world that has... But I was asking about the risks. I well, mean, what, can you tell us what our budget contributions will be 10 years from now, 15 years from now, if we vote to stay? Well, I know what our budget contributions are today, and they're not what's I'll emblazoned on a, the side I'll of your bus. Can you tell us how many uh, migrants might be resettled here under part of the... Under the More new migrants scheme, came from tech? outside of the EU than inside okay, the EU. I'll take that as another note. Can you tell us how many bailouts we might be dragged into if we Zero. vote to stay in? 
So you're, you're absolutely confident that mm -hmm. if we vote to stay in, There's we an can't, even though we had a written guarantee in 2014 that it wouldn't happen and we were dragged into the third bailout, you're absolutely confident that you can trust the Eurocrats when they make the same promise this time? Um, are you a Eurocrat? Because, I mean, you say Eurocrats, but you're an MEP and you get to vote. I, 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 okay, I, I okay. ask the question, let, let, Yes, that's true. Um, so, I don't think that we are run by Eurocrats. I think that MEPs like you and our ministers, who go to council of ministers meetings, uh, who win overwhelmingly 97% uh, okay. of the votes in the last 12 years, I don't think we're run by but Eurocrats. But the point is, I mean, you can't really answer any of those questions about how it might look if we stay in. Right? So there are risks both ways. Do you think it's safer for us to take back control so that we can mitigate those risks ourselves, or do you think we're safer passing control to people who may not have our interests at heart? I don't know why you as a Eurosceptic mistrust our European partners to such a great extent because actually the challenges that we face, as I said in my video in the 21st century, whether it's climate change or cross-border crime and terrorism, they are challenges that we share with our European partners. Okay. Well, let me ask another question. I mean, we have in this country, a, and you're a, a, an example of it, a very high-minded, radical tradition that has been very good at dispersing power away from oligarchs to the general population. As an heiress to Wilkes and Payne and the suffragettes and the Chartists, do you feel comfortable backing an elitist, anti-democratic project where supreme power is wielded by people who are immune to the ballot box, where we have to pay more to wealthy French farmers than to poor African farmers, and where we've inflicted joblessness and misery on tens of millions of working people around the Mediterranean while Eurocrats fly around What's in the private jets? Does, does, does well, Emma feel comfortable as a, as a, as a person on the centre-left lining up with those policies? I feel comfortable because I think the EU has been a force for good in, in terms of employment protection for workers in the way that a Conservative government never has. I feel comfortable because we elect our MEPs and we elect a government that sends ministers to Brussels who have the final say on European regulations. And I feel comfortable as an MP in our British Parliament mm. that over the vast majority of policy areas, whether it's health, housing, education, policing, we have, uh, we have competence in okay. those areas. So uh, Lord Rose, leader of the Remain campaign, says vote leave and we'll get higher wages. Paddy Ashdown also on the Remain campaign says vote leave and we'll get cheaper food. Don't you think there are benefits to the majority of low and medium income people in this country from having that boost in household income? On the contrary, I think it is So they're people, wrong? Yeah, I, I think they are wrong. Yeah. I, on the contrary, I think it is people in my own constituency and low and middle incomes who will suffer the most if, according to the Brexit economist Patrick Minford, our manufacturing is eliminated if we leave the EU, if, according to the Bank of England governor who has predicted a recession, if we leave the EU, it will people be on low and middle incomes of people I represent who will be worse off, not people who are earning uh, high income jobs. What do you think is the strongest argument for voting leave? I don't think there is a strong argument for voting leave. Do you think there's leave. any at all? I don't think there is a strong and argument I, for voting leave. And you see, I think this is one of the things that, that, that puzzles a lot of people one who are trying to make up their but minds. But then you don't think there are any you benefits guys, of us staying in the a, EU. Actually, do you know what? <laughs> I, I can see arguments on your side. Can you? uh, it's not my job to tell you what they are, but I can see them. But what is extraordinary to me is that people who think of themselves and make an issue out of being so broad minded and reasonable really struggle to see that there is another point of view at all. It just, it just can't put themselves in the shoes of the people who the EU is not benefiting, which is the vast majority of people in this country. Well, I think there's a lot of scaremongering on your side about, um, you know, if we stay in, what might happen, because actually if we stay in, we'll pretty much have the status quo. We'll have access to a market which we trade more with than the rest of the world. 44% uh, of our exports go to the rest of the EU. The weight of economic opinion and the weight of business opinion is that we should stay, and our trade unions, who represent more than 4 million of working people across the country, also think we should stay. So I'd rather listen to them than you. Thank you very much. And do you think that the European Union is a, is a growing, successful scheme that people would join today if we were not already Well, the it? European Union economy and yes the Eurozone no? economy is growing, yes. All right, that's a yes. We end it there. I thank you both for that.